Welcome back and thanks for joining me. Today we're continuing on with sports and physical activity in Australian society, which is a, um, an option for the uh, high school certificate in PDHPE. And today, and, and this time we're gonna look at sports as a commodity. Along with that, we're also gonna look um, over the cross the next couple of videos. This one we're gonna be looking at the development of sport as a professional, uh, sorry, development of sport as a professional sport. The next we're gonna look at sport is a big business. The video after that will be looking at sponsorship, advertising and sport. Uh, the one after that is the economics of hosting major sporting events. And finally, we'll look at the consequences for spectators and participants. So all of those are dot points under sports as a commodity for, uh, uh, in the syllabus. So let's have a look at the development of sport as a, um, a professional sport. So firstly, what is a commodity? Well, if you look at the definition, a comedy, a, a comedy, I wish it was a comedy, it's actually a commodity. And a commodity is something that of use, advantage, and a value that can be bought or sold. Um, basically an item that can be uh, sold for profit. And sport has developed from a pastime as a leisure activity to something that can be bought, sold, and is basically used um, for profit and financial profit mainly. Yeah, you know, from the earliest days, athletes used to uh, receive awards, whether it was awards for um, or rewards for for participating, but mainly for winning. And they would receive things such as money, uh, livestock, um, gifts, um, and also, if you remember, the Olympics when it first commenced in 1896, um, the winners would re receive um, an olive wreath to symbolise their victory. So over years, um, entrepreneurs sort of thought, well, instead of just making money from um, spectators, why not we make money from the players themselves? So what entrepreneurs thought is that, why don't we develop competitions, develop uh, teams, make it our own, and we own those competitions, and we own the teams. So they thought if they made their own teams, and their own players, um, basically they can have a share in the prize money. And also on top of that, gamble. And in turn for the players, they thought, well, the extra payment that they're gonna get for playing for someone or playing for um, a, a company or a competition, sorry, or an entrepreneur, um, is it gonna also benefit them in their own lifestyles? So even 30 years ago, um, Australia's sort of biggest codes, of football codes that is, uh, rugby league and AF AFL, they still had their own part-time jobs. Um, so they, sorry, they were still having their full-time jobs. So. Ultimately, they'd be going from work from nine to five and have training about three or four nights a week. Even in the 80s, cricket was still played in the traditional format, mainly test matches. One day cricket just started getting popular. It was in the late 70s where a person named Kerry Packer thought, and he was very business minded and, and an entrepreneur as well, thought, well, let's make cricket into a, a marketable um, commodity. Let's make it into a sport which people uh, would want to come. So he introduced something called one, night, one day cricket, which was day and night cricket. And uh, if you ever do a bit of research in it, you'll see that uh, Kerry Packer um, changed the clothing. He introduced um, day and night, so night time would be, um, so it'd be viewed by a lot wider audience. So, and then that's when the cricketers started getting paid a little bit more and they had these contracts, which they weren't used to. And that was sort of like a doorway into professionalism. Rupert Murdoch also in similar vein had the same idea, mainly overseas with his uh, Foxtel. However, in Australia, towards the late nineties, uh, he tried to take over rugby league, you could say, uh, and introduce something called Super League. And it, during that time, he wanted to change everything that rugby league was originally. And he offered, the, uh, he offered players a lot more money than they're normally used to. So rugby league and rugby union were revamped. New competition, new styles, new look, um, more money. The Olympic Games and the Football World Cup um, were also widely televised events. And, um, and they generate a vast amount of money with, within them. And you can see countries all over the world want to hold those games because they know the vast amount of money that will be filtered 
throughout their country and it brings the whole shining light of the whole world um, towards that country. From a government perspective and the Australian identity being a sporting culture, um, Australia needed to be more professional and needed to have more professional sports, especially after the Montreal Olympics in 1976. Uh, where Australia came home with hardly any medals. I don't think they even came home with a gold medal. Um, they saw a need that more had to be done for Australian sports. So the Australian Institute of Sport was, was uh, implemented uh, and situated in Canberra. And the main purpose was that other countries were becoming a lot more professionalized with their sport, that Australia had to go uh, with that. Otherwise they might see themselves as non-competitive around the world and in turn, lose a lot of money, you could say, um, and, and lose a lot of credibility as well. So the establishment of professionalism meant a lot of things. It meant there was gonna be a lot more money put into the, uh, into the, to the um, competitions, into the teams, into the sport. Making sport more professional meant a lot of things. It meant more money for the sport. Um, the government invested a lot more time and a lot more money into um, sport. Um, there was more, money invested in all facets of sport, including players, um, new establish establishments, new uh, grounds, new fields, uh, more infrastructure that's sports related. It also meant more business were interested in sports. So they put a lot, they would invest a lot more money into it. The new sport was, go was part of their business and being a culture, Australian, being, in Australia, being a culture that's derived a lot about sport, that has a real big interest in sport, and Australia being much of a sporting culture, it, is, it was important that sport became professional because a lot of business were interested as it attracted a lot of, a lot of interest. Look at today's papers, it's all about sport pretty much. Even our beloved Olympic Games became, uh, started becoming more professional. There was a long time it sort of held off that it didn't want to introduce professional athletes. It was all basically um, still amateur. However, with, the, uh, with all sports around the world pretty much going professional, um, it became a very cutthroat event. You know, gone are the ideals of the Olympic being all about, you know, uh, um, playing in fair and, 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 uh, and love and, and support. It's now about money, about the financial gain. So you could see that the Olympic Games, especially looking at the last few Olympic Games, there was a lot of professional athletes involved in all that. And um, a lot of countries had to go along with that, especially when you know the, the medal tallies mean a lot about your culture and about what you are as a country. So why did sport turn professional? Well, for a lot of things. It was needed to cover the costs of training, travel, accommodation, uh, work. Um, it was for insurance against injuries. Um, sponsorship. You know, a lot of uh, companies wanted to, to uh, show up, uh, wanted to sponsor sporting events. Sporting events were shown on TV. It was uh, a lot of people went to those, uh, went to the uh, events or, or games. Um, greater and media intention as well. Um, and improved standards of sport meant also improving the marketability of that sport. And you can see when as soon as sport went professional, it a lot of a lot of attention um, goes to it, so therefore it became more marketable, and and more and more companies wanted to be involved in that sport. So that was the development of sport as a professional sport. Let's have a look at the next video, and the next video is talking about sport being a big business.